Hi Sagittarius and welcome to your horoscope for 2021. Thank you for joining me. I've had a look at what the outer planets are doing including your ruler Jupiter and what areas of your chart they highlight this year and how that's going to affect you in 2021. So I'm going to give you an idea of what you're working with and then I'm going to give you a mark out of 10 for different areas of life. So career and family health. So I'll go through that to see what areas are really going to be easy and positive for you and where you need to put in a little bit more work. So first of all, your ruler Jupiter, the lucky planet, the planet of abundance and effortless fun and joy. That is in your third house of communication until June 2021. So with Jupiter just making your life bigger and creating effortless expansion and growth, it means you're super, super inspired in terms of what you're thinking about, the way you see the world, you see things very positively, and you're also willing to make a positive contribution. So that is really, really critical to having a good year because if your outlook is good, then everything else really stems from that and you can build on that. So you're really blessed and supported in this kind of outlook that you have going into 21 because you really approach it from this place of I can um, make changes, I can manifest my reality, I can take the things that I'm thinking and feeling and I can make those real. Saturn is also in your third house, but Saturn is in your third house all year. Saturn is the antithesis to Jupiter. It's about structure and security and locking things down and making them more reliable. Okay, so you are inspired with all of these insights. If you find a way to articulate those in a really concise way where other people can access them, like a book or a tape or a video or a piece of art or music or writing or um, a paper, a medical paper or... Um, an academic journal, you know, anything that you come up with that you make accessible to the public, that can really serve you very, very well. Like if you're an academic and you write this amazing paper and all your colleagues are like, oh, fabulous, that you can really solidify your position at that university and even become tenured. I think they still do that. Um, so it's that kind of thing. It's security and um, feeling comfortable in your life as a direct result of what you do with your ideas and your thoughts and your creative insights. Jupiter moves into your fourth house of family in June 2021 and the, the dynamic really shifts with Jupiter leaving the third and going into the fourth because it moves over the IC which has to do with your roots and it goes into your fourth house of family and you'll have a lot of good stuff happening in your family life from June 2021 until the end of the year and really you can do no wrong so you enjoy your family Things that were difficult in the past become much easier. You're able to even discover long lost relatives and form a relationship with them. So you feel supported and loved by your family and that gives you a sense of security in itself. Pluto is in your second house of money all year. Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth, transformation and change. And with that being in your second house, it can go either way. You can either, let's say you don't have much going on in your financial life at the moment. 2020 has been really hard. If that's the case, that's actually good. That's actually really good because Pluto takes one thing and turns it into another. It's not very nuanced. It's black and white, bad into good, night, day. So if things haven't been great in terms of your finances, you can really turn them around through what you're communicating in 2021. If you're, you know, the richest person in the world and you want to keep everything as it is, you need to prepare yourself for some changes when it comes to your finances because there will be external circumstances which influence you in that area of life. So if you've got all these investments, make sure that you're looking at them, that they're up to date and um, that you're not just letting things ride because things will change and you do need to keep an eye on them. Uranus is in your sixth house. Uranus is energy. It's chaotic energy. It's the miraculous. It's the unexpected. It's what you could have never dreamed of. And your sixth house is your daily routine, your work, your body, the way you structure your day. And that can really be thrown into chaos and see a lot more energy if you use your ideas creatively or you express them in some sort of communicative format because it brings a lot of energy into your working life and changes into your finances and then obviously that's going to have a knock-on effect to the way you run your life you know if you're earning i don't know 500 pounds a month and then that changes to 5 million a month your lifestyle is going to look a lot different 
Neptune's in your fourth. So Neptune is the water planet of dreams and intuition. That makes you very sensitive. It makes you very uh, focused on nurturing other people, even healing other people. You'll understand what some people are going through without them even telling you. So you're super, super tuned in. And that in itself is helpful to what you're thinking about and what you're going to articulate. Because you'll have all of these profound, deep insights into other people's lives, into your own life, into the human condition that you can really articulate and share and educate other people about. And that's really um, going to give you a much stronger sense of, I have a base, I feel like I belong. It also means that um, intuitively you can deal with any family situations which may come up. So don't try and overthink things, give people the benefit of the doubt, have faith and um, see things through. But it also may make things a little bit fuzzy and difficult to kind of decipher. Like, I really don't understand what you're talking about. I love you, but I have no idea what you're saying. It's, it's difficult with Neptune to see the end result. Um, it makes things a little bit challenging because you don't it feels like you're walking through the fog and for some people that can create major anxiety so listen to your intuition it's not going to take you in the wrong direction when it comes to family i would just exercise patience and remember that you do love these people and that even if you don't understand everything they're saying or doing doesn't mean that that has to cause a rift between you you can just try and feel your way through it and you will get an answer also, if the family is shattered and totally at odds with one another, with Neptune in your fourth, and if you have this desire to manifest a family that is whole and loving, then you can really do that, whether it's patching things up with your birth family or having a family of your own. Chiron's in your fifth, and Chiron is the wounded healer, and that's asking you to kind of heal yourself and to focus on what it is you enjoy and what you can create for you and not just do for other people. And that's really going to help you be articulate and eloquent and to express your opinions and views. Because that's really a big luck factor here in 2021. So in terms of the different themes, for love you get a 6 out of 10. Career, 9 out of 10 because it's dependent on whether you take your inspiration and you do something with it. If you do, it's really going to benefit you hugely. Family, you get 10 out of 10. Health, eight out of 10. Friendships, five out of 10, just because you're not so focused on acquaintances and people who are just kind of peripheral in your life. Spirituality is six. Again, you're more focused on your daily routine and although I would say maybe a seven because you're naturally inspired to communicate and that comes from somewhere. You know, like the example I always think of with this is, is it Bach or Beethoven? But um, that music has to come from somewhere. And I think it's from some bigger, all-knowing, amazing force. Um, you don't have to share that belief. But if you think that Beethoven got his ideas from his little noggin, then that's where he got them from. And that's where you'll get them from too this year. Money is a five. I don't think money is a huge area of focus and interest. And finally, travel seven, because you do want to explore and to educate and to broaden your life and to make it bigger. So whether you're traveling in a physical sense by going on holidays or you're traveling in an intellectual sense by educating yourself and then educating other people, there's going to be a lot of movement and the, your life will be a lot richer in the amount of people you have in your life. So don't just keep it to family um, and work. But also try and um, look at the people who you love, who are your friends and who, who you do care about and to include those in things. So that's what I get for you in 2021. These horoscopes are for Sun Sign Sagittarius first, then for the Rising Sign Sagittarius. And finally, if you want lots of information, then the Moon Sign Sagittarius. So you'd watch all three in that order. Sun, Rising and then the Moon. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch by my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online. Have an amazing 2021 and I'll speak to you soon.